Uh, so my name is David O'Queeve. I'm from Dublin. I'm 28 years old. I do a lot of different things, but first and foremost, I am a professional wakeboarder. And then in the last couple of years, I've dabbled in car journalism, I suppose you would say, reviewing all the new cars that come to market and also kind of video production and everything around that. So summarizing it uh, from, from start to finish, I started water skiing at five years old. Then at 10 years old, I started wakeboarding. Did that and then at 12, I hounded and hounded my parents to go to a competition. Went to the Irish Nationals and that was my first competition and then I got a taste for it and I completely ran with it the whole way through secondary school. Uh, and then I went to university for one year but then I dropped out I suppose is the phrase you use. I was living in the States, traveling the world competing, uh, also doing a lot of coaching, working with brands and then for my 21st birthday my parents bought me a camera and the idea with the camera was to film wakeboarding and then to be able to go home and analyze what I was doing wrong, learning tricks. I started watching YouTube to figure out how to work a camera, how to use editing software. And then I looked and I was like, oh, no one's doing YouTube tutorials for wakeboarding. So I started a YouTube channel with wakeboarding tutorials. And luckily that like, grew to what is in wakeboarding a good number. In the grand scheme of things, not massive numbers. It's very, very niche, but really enjoyed doing that. Then I was really fortunate that the head of Rebel Cliff Diving was into wakeboarding. It's what he did in his spare time, so he used to watch my tutorials. And he messaged me and asked me, would I be interested in talking absolute nonsense on TV for Red Bull? So I started doing the cliff diving series. That got me in front of camera a lot more, and I kind of learned how to present a little bit. And then with that skill, about four years ago, I decided I really want to review cars, because that's a huge passion of mine. Um, and whilst all this is going on, I'm still competing wakeboarding, still traveling, but just, I guess, greedily wanted to do more and more and more. So I approached Done Deal, which is like one of Ireland's biggest car selling websites, and I said, would you be interested in doing some car reviews? And I kind of gave them a turnkey solution. I gave them an example of what I could produce. I told them the exact price, how many it would be, all the kind of whole advantages of YouTube for SEO, for everything like that. And they ran with it, so then I started reviewing cars and then that kind of jumped into then essentially video production and now we do it for all sorts of stuff. There's, there's no balance. Wakeboarding is as amazing as it is. It's quite an expensive sport to do it. So I'm really fortunate. I have great support from various different American companies actually for the most part. But all that revenue is 100% spent on wakeboarding. It's spent on flights to go train, it's going to competitions. So it's very much kind of, it's a break even, even thing. So it's 100% passion driven, that's absolutely for certain. And so I guess that's maybe a little bit why I started doing the other stuff was to have a living and to be able to kind of, you know, I don't know, go on a holiday or buy a nice car, because obviously I love cars. So I think it's important to do something you really, really enjoy, but obviously if you can make money doing it at the same time, then all the better. The biggest kind of barrier with wakeboarding for me was I'm Irish, it's a water sport, and it's bloody freezing in the winter. Throughout the winter, I used to go up to caverns where I trained, and so after school on a Friday, I'd be in the car with my mum or dad, and I'd spend the weekend in cavern in the ice cold, sometimes actually physically, physically breaking the ice. It actually paid off in, in, in two ways. Whenever I did get to travel, if I, if I got to go to Florida or Spain or wherever it was wakeboarding, I would be like, I have two weeks and I need to learn everything I can learn in the next two weeks because when I go home, it's gonna be cold again and I don't wanna be falling into the water. That was one big advantage. And then the second thing that it was, was it actually was, it, as I grew and became a professional athlete, people would be like, oh, that's that Irish guy. And it was a little bit of an identity in itself. But when you go to a sport, it, it actually kind of is very valuable. You don't realize if you're just another American, there's so many of them doing so much stuff. And same with the Australians, there's so many who are doing amazing and it's, it's hard for them to differentiate themselves. So whilst it was a challenge being from Ireland, it's actually been amazing at the same time. There's been two or three large barrier points in wakeboarding, and I think with a lot of sport there is. And so it's for me, it was specific tricks or, or a category of trick and, and kind of almost, there's like level one, level two, level three, level four, and breaking each one of those levels, like almost completing it, you will get stuck. And I remember I was 16 and I was kind of, that's almost 
in sport where you make it or break it because there's other distractions but also kind of those are your peak years after that for the next 10 years and I remember just struggling and falling and falling and I think I went to Florida for over a month which is the mecca of wakeboarding and I didn't learn a single trick whereas previously I would come home with a trick every day and I just was so disheartened but then when I got home because I plucked away at it every single day it did eventually just kind of click unknowingly and it wasn't you didn't see the progress sometimes you can't visually and tangibly see the progress but then when you step away take a little breather and then go back it actually all becomes apparent the more you fall and the more times you've kind of hurt yourself doing it the more rewarding it is when you get there and so if it comes easily to you you'll just completely lose interest You know, I love kind of having essentially a blank canvas and then creating whatever you want and then if it does well on social media or, or the client is happy with it then that's for me keeps me ticking so what inspires me is definitely just doing things I like and kind of creating things whether it's on a wakeboard on a video or whatever it might be I think your brain only has so much creativity and luckily mine's quite a lot but I definitely find sometimes if I'm working on a video campaign and then I'm also trying to maybe write a script for an, a, a car review and then I'm also trying to think of wakeboarding things, it definitely becomes drained and sometimes you can't power through and continue to be creative. I think it's something that comes to you naturally and when it runs out, it runs out and you have to just give up for the day and then the next day start again. I think the best advice, and it wasn't necessarily ever said to me, but the best advice that I've kind of learnt through doings is that you do just have to keep looking away at stuff. Um, not all progress is tangible or is visible, and I think you just have to enjoy what you do, keep at it, and then it all happens. Mm -hmm. I think in my wakeboarding career, the proudest moment was probably, I have two. One was when I was maybe 17 and I won a big event in the UK. Uh, it was my first pro win and that was obviously a huge, huge moment. And then I think actually in the end, end of 2019, I came fourth in the World Championships. For me, that was obviously a huge, huge goal was to get into a final, which is top six, and then I managed to come fourth. So yeah, that, they're probably my two biggest proudest moments. <laughs>